So can I request Dr. Kenneth Tumwebaze eh, to make his presentation? Thank you, Charles. My name is Kenneth Tumwebaze, and I'm going to be here to present on behalf of Fred Rally, the Managing Director of Art Conference. Say hi to them. I'm looking at, I'm looking at climate change results, oil and gas activities, but also get into how it really can be very important in providing remedial options for people taking in some of the gases and we will dive into it uh, later. And my presentation is going to uh, go around those uh, dimensions. I will talk about climate change, greenhouse gases, sources of the greenhouse gases, uh, emissions, but I will much more talk about uh, carbon dioxide, and then look at the trees, the mountains, in the you field know, of uh, mitigating on uh, climate change. You know, climate change is a wider subject, and I would like to, if I said I will get into the field of energy, but I would need to just give an overview for uh, participants to appreciate. Uh, climate change refers to any significant change in average weather conditions lasting uh, for an extended period of time, and that can go for decades or even millions of years ago. I mean, millions, millions of years. What are these conditions? The conditions are temperature, precipitation, uh, wind patterns, among others. How does such a change take place? How does climate change take place? We know that the Earth absorbs some of the radiant energy, if you want to call it thermal energy or heat energy, which is received from the sun. And that uh, the Earth absorbs some of the radiant energy received from the sun, reflects some in the form of light, but at the same time is able to radiate. So the Earth's surface temperature depends on this balance between the incoming and then the outcoming energy. If this energy balance is shifted, then we have either a cooling effect or a warming effect, which we can describe as global warming or even regional uh, warming. So what is the relationship between the green gas, greenhouse gases and then climate change? We know that uh, greenhouse gases are those gases that can absorb and emit infra or heat radiation. And the most abundant greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere, together with their contribution to the greenhouse effect, are water vapor, which contributes between 36 to 72 percent, carbon dioxide, which contributes between 9 to 26 percent, methane, between uh, 4 and 9, ozone between 3 uh, to 7, nitrous oxide, and then chlorofluorocarbons. Well, we cannot be able to state a, with exact precision what percentage each really contributes because many of them will really radiate within the same frequencies. Uh, but what we can say Precisely is that uh, when greenhouse gas concentration rises beyond a particular norm, it sort of insulates the earth's surface, and that can be a source of uh, the earth warming. And this warming can result into unusual droughts, but also know there can be change in wind patterns, movements, and then excessive rainfall. Effects of increased gas or greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere. What are these? There can be ocean acidification and I must at this point tell you that uh, even if you are talking about uh, climate change in Uganda, the, uh, the greenhouse gases are not localized in a different place. They can diffuse across uh, ectons and therefore it is across board. Small pollution ozone depletion, changes to plant growth and nutrient levels. Of course, if you have nitrates in the soil, 
and then you have carbon dioxide changing into weak carbonic acid that can work upon the nitrates and then we change the nutrient level within the soil. For example, the Royce Gracia, which is the largest on Mount, on Mount Kenya, has so far been observed to decrease by 90% since 1934, and that's the trend we observe here. So that, in effect, uh, indicates that there has been a uh, decline in the, the glacier of many mountains across both Africa and there are examples outside the African continent. Uh, what is important here is that if a gas, a greenhouse gas, has been emitted in the atmosphere, how long does it take? And that forms a very important aspect for our understanding and consideration of carbon dioxide, which I will later on speak in some more detail. Water vapor takes a little while. Nine days. Carbon dioxide takes between 30 to 90 years, and then nitrogen, nit dinitrogen oxide takes uh, 114 years. That's quite big on a comparative scale. What are the main sources of atmospheric carbon dioxide? I just want to deal with carbon dioxide on a greater extent. <coughs> They can be natural or human. And the natural sources include the composition of, uh, of matter, water body release, and then respiration, which we know, of course, from uh, animals, but also plants. Human sources come from activities like deforestation, as well as burning of fossil fuels, such as petroleum products. And that's why, and that's why uh, uh, the activities of oil and gas come in. So they are directed to the emission of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So due to human activities, the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide has been rising extensively since the industrial revolution and has now reached dangerous levels not seen in the last three million years. So we cannot say that the uh, uh, concentrations of carbon have begun increasing of recent it is as, as historical as we can witness here. 87% uh, of all human produced carbon dioxide emissions come from the burning of the fuel, I mean of the fossil fuels, like natural, uh, natural gas and then oil. So what does that mean? That any business, any operation dealing with fossil fuel certainly produces a significant quantity of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And uh, we have, uh, I have here some statistics that about one barrel of crude oil uh, releases uh, 317 kilograms of carbon dioxide per minute during the uh, refinery process. So, and the reports show that in Uganda, about 6.5 billion barrels exist in the depots. So, entire how much of carbon dioxide can we be able to emit in the longer run? The calculations have been made here. But you have to remember that 6.5 billion barrels are projections, so they may not really be real when we come to the, uh, to, to the exploration in practical terms. But that figure relates around uh, this very magnitude. So the big question, how much carbon dioxide is expected to be emitted in the entire oil and gas business in Uganda? I have read a little to the same, but we have to think about it very deeply. And how much of tree biomass do we need to sequester or absorb this carbon? Who are the key players and who are the concerned stakeholders? This is very, very important, and that's why we talk about cooperation. Uh, further statistics, crop run sequesters, or if you want, absorbs. Uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 metric tons per acre per year. You can look at the comparison with forest, grassland, swamp, stroke, flood uh, frame, and then wetland. So what we observe here, here is that uh, the forest absorbs relatively high, although swamps also can be able to do it. And that also calls for the importance of the of the, of the tree. What can we do to deal with 
emission of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Because we have to know that trees have the potential to absorb carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. So I argue that if all the education institutions close to the oil fields were asked and separate with three seedlings, if all the churches to the oil field, I mean close to the oil fields were asked and separate with three seedlings, <coughs> if all the if all the sites of all access loads networking within the oil fields were planted with trees, if all the interested tree farmers across oil fields were provided with the seedlings, if all the communities around the oil fields were asked and supplied with tree seedlings, if all trees that were data based during the 3D season, because what we know is that during the 3D season, in the, uh, in the Alberta and the the number of trees I mean, we are destroyed. Some certainly will be regenerated, as uh, Madame Justin said, but some might disappear. So where is the, the fall backup position for those that are not going to be documented, I mean, regenerated? But more importantly, we need to know that there has been a loss in the trees, and therefore we could also think about recovering them through the options I have just given. And I'm saying that if all the concerned government line institutions supported and advocated for all the options, would have at least absorbed a unit of carbon from the atmosphere. I want to turn to our concept, what services we offer. We do carbon baseline surveys and we previously done with a number of companies including our green resources S in the Soga Forest Company. Uh, we have we do forest biomass inventories and we've been doing work with the British American tobacco, Uganda, we've done work with the FIPOCA, that's a project in use of water and the environment. We do GIS and, and mapping, remote sensing, with a number of NGOs. And I want at this point to uh, tell you that Otim, who is over there, you can just say hi to the members, uh, has got a resource base for supply of equipment related to GIS, GPS, softwares. If there was time, we would be able to you know, share it. But if there is time, we would be able to route in at our own convenience. But he's a man to conduct if you want a software related to GIS. We also do car, car stroke of property tracking. We do web mapping for your estates. And we've done this with the national, with the national houses and the construction companies. And that's our contact. I think that's I have passed your this. I think we have. But Thank that's you why much. I needed to be stopped. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy that you care for this. I now get off the podium, Charles. Thank you very much. Uh, can we give him another round of applause? <laughs>